All right, hello. Welcome back to the uh, second part of uh, Tenenbaum's, uh, her uh, story progression. This, um, we're going to call this the start or the road to redemption. At this point, it sounds like an old Bob Hope and Bing Crosby movie, but it it really is. Well, yeah, that's my little joke, but <clears throat> yep, we're going to take a look at Tenenbaum's um how she goes about it and what she does. So here we go. One of the children came and sat in my lap. I push her off. I shout, get away from me. I can see the Adam oozing out of the corner of her mouth is thick and green. Her filthy hair hanging in her face, dirty clothes, and that dead glow in her eye. I feel hatred. Like I never felt before in my chest, bitter, burning fury. I can barely breathe. And suddenly I know it is not this child I hate. So a little bit of background to this. The children she's talking about are uh, the little sisters who she essentially created. She discovered the... Um, property the atom inside the sea slugs and discovered that if the sea slugs were inside little girls um then they produced a lot more um for some reason only worked with little girls so it didn't work with anyone else and apparently people died uh trying to find that out and you know to create all this atom which you know essentially uh, her point of view on the atom was that it proved all of her theories it, it was such a great discovery but then to make more of it to push it on, on the world she uh, created the little sisters. Now, what she's experiencing here when the little, little sister sits on her lap is uh, was known as uh, projecting. Um, she's basically all that the feeling that she has, this hatred, this fury, um, is being projected onto this little girl. And this is a really intense emotion. She, as she states, it's bitter and burning fury, and she can barely breathe when she feels this fury. Now, when I was a little kid, um, I would watch, you know, funny shows, and I would actually laugh so hard I would stop breathing, and my parents would have me run around, uh, so I'd start breathing again. And I, it's, you know, it's inconceivable that something like that would happen to me as an adult, um, but, you know, kids feel things more, more intensely, and, yeah, when that, ha when it happens to them, it's, yeah, they can stop breathing. Now, this is an adult feeling fury so much that they that she can hardly breathe, and that's a very intense fury. And then suddenly she has uh, what you might call a breakthrough, a psychological breakthrough, that she realizes it's not this. It's not the child that she hates. She's looking at essentially her own creation. She's looking at what she's done to this child, and suddenly she feels this intense burning fury and hatred like she had never felt before. So we're going to go to one other um, of her uh, discussing this, or this very similar thing. So here we go. What makes something like me? I look at genes all day long, and never do I see the blueprint of sin. I could blame the Germans, but in truth, I did not find tormentors in the prison camp but kindred spirits. These children I brutalized have awoken something inside that for most is beautiful and natural, but in me is an abomination, my maternal instinct. Now, like she says, this uh, sort of thing she feels, maternal instinct, or for males it would be paternal instinct, is very, very natural in most people. But she had always approached um, her life and everything from the very uh, clinical, scientific point of view. And um, first in the prison camps, then in uh, Ryan's rapture, um, she disregarded all morality and ethics for just a pure pursuit of science. And it led her to create um, the Little Sisters. And suddenly, you know, something clicks in her head subconsciously it, it it had to have bothered her and then it clicks in her head and she suddenly realizes that she's starting to feel for 
essentially uh, the creatures that she um, experimented on. Um, she uses the word brutalize, which is a highly personalized, highly uh, motive word to use to describe it. That's not the way a scientist describes at some something they are experimenting on. It's as it's like she says, it's a maternal instinct. It's the way a mother describes something horrible happening to a child. And this wakes her up. This leads her onto the road of uh, redemption. Um, the Tenenbaum we see. Um, First and the last ones we talked about, and in these two, um, she's not quite to the point of redemption, but both versions of Tenenbaum that we have seen before are very different from the Tenenbaum we meet. And initially, it, it's a little, it seems almost contradictory, because she created the little sisters, and then she kills a splicer to keep him from killing the little sister, and when she's unable to uh, stop Jack from... Uh, doing anything to a little sister, she uh, presents him with an option instead of killing the little sister to save the little sister. Um, and if you proceed on that path and save the little sister, which, you know, I'm, I'm going to say you really should do. I'm just, just, just going to say that. <clears throat> but if you proceed on that, at one point she, she talked, talking about Adam says that Adam improved everything about a human being except for his soul, his moral and spiritual self, but perhaps if you continue on this path, you will find Adam will find a way to improve that soul, that it might possibly exist, a way to actually make yourself better, which is an interesting idea and concept. But that's not really a point of this video. The point is that you can see how far she's come and how far she's progressed. And this is one of the reasons why I said in in a previous video she this she has the best storyline because. There's a progression there. There's redemption that comes out of it, and it is very <clears throat> different from pretty much every other other storyline you get. Every other storyline you get, it it is kind of a uh, downer storyline. You find out, you know, it's horrible things happening to people. Some of them quite good people. And in this one, it's someone who's really not a good person suddenly becoming redeeming themselves. Um, in religious terms, I'm going to use the religious terminology of repentance because she, it's that's really what she goes through. She recognizes that she's doing something wrong, she stops doing it, and then she actively tries to make amends. She tries to save the little sisters, tries to you know push the character you're playing into um, being helpful, helping her in her cause to save these uh, little girls. And it's just it, it's just an incredible. For me, it's it's a great story, and it's a wonderful thing to have encountered within this game. Um, so, yep, that's part two. Um, I'm going to do one more part, uh, look at uh, her a bit further along in, into the future. Um, like and subscribe if you uh, like this, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.